bike that we are using for this build is an older Pantera GTS. For the bullet train, it is absolutely required that you use a bicycle with a standard pedal crank positioning, which is located under the seat tube. Do not use a forward pedal crank bicycle frame. Let's start by taking off the bike chain and removing the rear wheel. We have to remove the coaster brake from the spokes hub. Use some leverage with a socket wrench and a crescent wrench to help break loose the nut. Take off the dust cap as well. To get your spokes clamp assembly on, we'll have to cut through one of the rubber pads and then fit it onto the inner axle. Place two metal tabs behind the rubber pad and align the top rubber pad with the sprocket to allow bolts to hold the entire clamp assembly in place. Remember to use washers and lock washers. What we like to do is hand thread the nuts onto each bolt to hold them in place. This ensures that the bolts do not fall out when completing the sprocket installation. This is an added step and not necessary, but it helps with the process. So once you have all the bolts threaded, it's time to tighten down the assembly by placing a washer, lock washer, and a nut for all nine bolts. While tightening down your assembly, make sure to keep your sprocket at the dead center of the hub. While tightening bolts down, your sprocket may move and shift. Do not lose track of centering the sprocket from time to time. Another thing to watch out for is evenly tightening each bolt in a crisscross pattern. Look at how many threads you've passed on each bolt and keep it balanced. Putting your coaster brake on will be a challenge. The bolts on the sprocket will prevent the coaster brake from clearing its rotation. You can attempt to modify your coaster brake by bending it, but the easier solution would be to upgrading to rear caliper brakes. Since you're going to be traveling in speeds between 20 to 35 miles per hour, we recommend adding brakes anyways for upgraded safety. But don't forget to put back on the washers and bolt. Time to put your wheel back onto your bike. This next part is the hardest section of installing your engine kit. You'll have to true out your sprocket by tightening the bolts uniformly. A good trick to help find where the sprocket is untrue is to hold a screwdriver with the tip almost making contact with the sprocket. Spin your rear wheel until you feel the tip make contact with the sprocket. These are the areas you'll have to tighten down until your sprocket is completely leveled. Again, this is the hardest and most time consuming part of the build. To avoid this, I highly recommend upgrading to the BBR tuning sprocket adapter. The adapter is much easier to use and is true to a fault. For the next section of the build, we'll be removing the master link on the chain to take off the bike's original pedal crank. The bullet train does require a wide pedal crank shaft in order for it to clear the engine block. Our pedal assembly is reverse threaded. Make sure that you're threading your assembly correctly. Here's our wide pedal crank assembly. Screw in the hexagon nut onto the crankshaft with the hexagon side facing out. Install the hexagon keeper on the side of the shaft that has the stopper. 
Next, take the bearings, grease them up, and place them onto your shaft with the ball bearing facing inwards. Thread the axle through the bike frame and then place in the other bearing and cap it off with the other hexagon nut. Find the ring with the inner divot and match it with the top part of the crank, then tighten down the lock nut. Now install your pedal arms. The last part is to put on the pedal and connect the chain. Moving on to prepping our engine, we'll screw in the mounting studs for both front and back of the motor. Make sure you tighten these bolts down with a pair of vice grips or use the two nuts method. Thread two nuts on the stud, tighten them against each other, then with a wrench on the top one, tighten the studs and then loosen the nuts once the studs is threaded all the way through. We'll also ground our engine with the green wire. Your engine is ready to be mounted onto your bike. Fit the mounting studs in between the frame of your bike and lock them in place with the metal tabs. When mounting the engine, make sure the starter does not touch the frame. There should be clearance between the two. Make sure your pedals clear your engine. Next, we'll install the battery. You want to connect the green ground wire from your engine to the black negative side of your battery. Now, this is part of the build that is very dangerous. I highly recommend wearing safety gloves uh, because you are dealing with a live battery and you're also putting wires together to get a jump start. One thing you should, for certain, do not have this wire touch the positive end of that wire. It will create sparks and it can potentially harm you. Uh, to give you a quick demonstration, this is what it looks like. All right? Yep. So, be careful. Do not do this without any safety gear. You will hurt yourself. From your kill switch handle, we're going to connect the positive wire to the positive side of the battery. Once you're done, put your battery into the protective casing. A good tip to ensure that your battery lid sits flush with the bottom case is to place the green ground wire on the side of the battery instead of over the top. The mounting brackets will help seal the case. Reattach the top mounting pieces and find a preferred place to mount your battery. The mount with the long bolt goes towards the back of the frame, right behind the seat tube. It comes with a mounting bracket that lays over the wheel stay for any standard frame. The back of the battery mount is a little different. Hook into two metal tabs and keep them pinched together onto your frame with bolt and nut. It provides two sets of holes to position your battery appropriate to your bicycle. You want your battery as close to the frame as possible. Now hook the two metal clamps in a set of mounting holes and clamp the metal brackets together with a long bolt provided. Many people feel that it's not an ideal place to mount your battery. We encourage anyone who is installing your battery to mount it where it is best for your ride. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with additional mounting hardware. so. 
any other area you decide to mount your battery will require some customization and modifications. Connecting the electrical box is pretty self-explanatory. Simply match the colors of the wires together. After we'll connect the red capped wire from your battery to the right side of your relay. Don't forget to put on the protective cap. Connect the black capped wire to the left side of your relay. Once you're done connecting all of the wires, neatly tuck in all of the excess wires back into the box and bolt on the mounting brackets. Then mount the electrical box under your bike frame with another tab. When mounting the electrical box, find a good spot where it's close enough to the spark plug, but far back from the front fork so it won't get in the way when you turn your front wheel. The next step is to install the kill switch and throttle cable. Unscrew the two screws on the bottom of your kill switch to open it up. Go ahead and install the throttle cable by threading the cable through the bottom and then screwing on the elbow piece. Take the end of the throttle cable and attach it to the throttle handle. Once attached, place the throttle into the designated slot in the kill switch housing. Before installing the throttle handle, we highly recommend drilling a mounting hole for the kill switch. Measure 5 inches from the end of the handlebar to the center and drill a pilot hole with a 3 16th drill on the bottom of the handlebar. And then slide the entire installation onto the handlebar. Close the top on and put the two screws back into to secure everything in place. Next we'll connect the other end of the throttle cable to the carburetor. Unscrew the top of the carburetor and take out the spring. The jet needle, the e-washer, and the slider. Go ahead and thread the throttle cable through the cap and spring. Next, put your jet needle and e washer into the slider. Make sure that the e washer is aligned with the slit on the slider. Finally, thread the throttle cable through the slider and e-washer. The spring should keep everything intact. Then put the installation back into the carburetor. Notice the slit on the carburetor slide? Make sure to line that up with the guided peg located inside the carburetor when you cap the carburetor back.
Finally, put the carburetor assembly onto the engine block and tighten it in place with the metal clamps. After, screw on the spark plug and attach the cable to it. Make sure to tighten down on the spark plug as tight as you can to prevent any compression loss. Use the spark plug remover tool and a screwdriver to tighten it down further. Then press the spark plug cap from the electrical box until you can hear it click in place. Moving on to the exhaust pipe, let's put the brass gasket with the rounded end facing inside. Go ahead and insert your exhaust into the engine block and secure it in place. We'll install the chain next. For this, you'll need a flat head screwdriver, near nose pliers, and a heavy chain breaker. The first thing we are going to do is remove the master link. Lay your chain out onto the sprocket and feed the other end through the drive sprocket. After measuring out the length of chain you'll need to have a tight drive chain, use the chain breaker to detach the excess length. Reconnect the ends of the chain with the master link. To keep constant tension on the chain, install the chain idler onto the frame of your bike. Make sure to have the idler on as firm as possible. The last section of this build is mounting our gas tank and adding oil to the engine. Start by screwing in the fuel valve into the gas tank. Don't forget to add the valve gasket. Next, mount the gas tank to the top tube of your bike. Using the tabs provided, make sure to place your tank in an area that will not restrict the steering handles. Go ahead and attach the fuel line to the fuel valve. Next, cut the fuel line to make room to add a fuel filter. Reconnect both ends, then finally connect the fuel line to the carburetor intake. To add oil into your engine, lay your bike flat on the ground and unscrew the cap on the side. Measure out 120 milliliters of motor oil and funnel it into the motor. Let's fill up your gas tank. Your two-stroke engine requires a 20 to 1 gas to oil mixture during its break-in period. To help manage some of the cables, we've provided you with some zip ties. Uh, there's two ways to start with this. There's the electrical start, which is the main feature of this. Um, just to kind of give you an overhead of what these buttons do. Uh, this when you move the switch over to the white solid dot, that kills the engine, doesn't start it. Move it over to where it's on, when you press the button, the engine, the engine should start right away. Alright, now if you want to kill the engine, unfortunately, these buttons up here, I don't know what they really do. They so far don't really do anything. But to kill it successfully, uh, just simply move the switch back to the solid dot. 
engine kill. The bullet train also offers a pull start in case your battery runs dry, making the bullet train one of the most reliable and easy to use bike engines. There's no need for pedal starts or a clutch system. The bullet train handles it all so you can spend more time enjoying the road.